Welcome to this CGTN live streaming episode. I am Xu Xingchen. So you, you are wondering why we have beer and that why, why I'm wearing goggles. So I am in one of the manufacturing facilities owned by Harbin Brewery and I am in the manufacturing facilities quality assurance lab. So basically this lab tracks the quality uh, from the origin of the ingredients to the final product. To learn more about this facility where have a lab analyst here to tell us a little bit more. So hi, uh, so what can you tell us about this facility? So what do you like do for, for, for your daily job? Okay, uh, welcome to Curie Department. Curie Department investment 80 million. Uh, all the equipment at the international leading level. Uh, for example, this is a PCR to quickly test. We're going to have a quick look about this machine. So this is a box and it's called a PCR, right? Uh, this is PCR. It can uh, quite quickly test the uh, MO. What's MO? Uh, Yes, you, you can say in Chinese. So basically, this is about the, the microbiotics uh, in the ingredients. Is this for the ingredients or for the final product? This is our final product. This is our final product. So everything from the streamline. So this machine can, yes. can detect everything. Yes. So what about. The, the, the other machines? Uh, for example, this is the Antumpa. It is to test the uh, color and the OG of the word. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the okay. word, okay, the word. So, word is basically a derivative from uh, one of the main ingredients for beer, like molly barley. Word means ha the percentage of the concentration of a barley used during the fermentation process, I believe, to make beer. Uh, so, um, so basically, this lab monitors uh, the entire process of the brewing, uh, brewing beer, right? So, what what does the, this kind of uh, the quality assurance lab can really do to to the to the finished products? So, what can this do to uh, to make sure that uh, the quality is top notch? Uh, there are 422 monitoring points from the raw materials to the finished product. Uh, uh, every day we can test more than 1,000 items to make sure our data is more reliable. So basically, is a, a gigantic state-of-art uh, facility, of course. And uh, here we have a infographic that, uh, what, what, what does this what can this graph tell us about? Okay, this is the minimum test uh, to make a beer. On the one hand, it can show the employees the uh, minimum simple plan. On the other hand, when the consumers visit, they can clearly know our test uh, capacity to more trust our product. So this is basically what the, the, the minimum... Uh, so the minimum uh, simple plan. Simple discipline or simple principle. A uh, test, simple test plane, oh, okay. simple test plane. So it starts with the uh, water? Uh, uh, water, we need to test the salary, uh, pH, TA, uh, MO, and uh, uh, iron, and so on. So basically it's, it's more like a purified, a clean water, right? To make sure the water yeah, is clean. The water is clean, is to can product the finished, uh, pro uh, finished uh, products. So then we, we have the malt, basically is the, the, the cereal, the grain, right? The main ingredients of making beer. Yes. So what, what, do, what, what do we actually monitor in there? Uh, the malt, we need to test uh, it uh, all, uh, about a fan, about a salary to make it is the, so what she told me in Chinese is like they are making sure uh, the flavor, the smell of the malt can, can be suitable uh, to make beer. And then um, through the whole process from like packaging, from the glass bottle, they are going to monitor uh, the chemical comp comp uh, composition of the, 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 the products. And then we have the actual beer in, in the market. So even the labels that you, label. what about the labels? What do you do with the labels? Labels is 
呃，它是呃贴在啤酒瓶外面的商标，然后呢，它是为了保证让我们的消费者能知道我们的啤酒，我们的一瓶酒是到底是哪些原材料是做成的，然后呢，能知道我们的这个啤酒的一个完全它的原材料，完全它的生产厂家，然后能有一个这种追溯的保证。So basically, it contains the information got from this lab, right? 就是我们基本上就这个商标上面就是我们。实验室里面的一些成果，对吗？就是它的数据是从这个实验室里面分析出来的。也是的。So basically, till the last part of the whole process is the labeling, and on the label, you know, we're going to have the information came from this very lab about your beer, about the origin, about the ingredients, and everything. However, you know, this is just the 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 really high tech part of making beer, and and the more if we think about a beer, we think about a brewing process and how it's being made, how it's being brewed. And here we're going to learn a little more about how beer is made here in Harbin Brewery. And we have a beer a brewing master, Wang Xing Chen. And I'm going to take off my goggles just because we're going to leave this lab. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, so we're heading to the brewing house, but tell us a little bit about, more about this uh, brewing process. Okay. So. So let's talk. Sorry for the lag for a little bit. So we were just talking about the brewing process, and we're heading towards the brew brewing house. So, so Master Wang, Wang, what can you tell us about the brewing process? Okay, uh, the brewing process is uh, includes the three parts. The first is the uh, brewing house. The mm -hmm. second is the fermentation, and the third is the filtration. Uh, the first step is the uh, brewing house. Brewing house uses the raw material, produces the wort. Mm -hmm. The different wort will produce the different uh, the brand, uh, such as uh, the 1,900 brand and the Harbin and the Harbin popular brand. Mm -hmm. So we have go to the onsite to introduce the equipment and the process. Mm, sure, yeah. So we are heading into the brew house. Ooh. It's really warm in here, yeah, right? Yeah. Because of the in burn house process, we control the time and the temperature to control the different the special kitchen for different brand, the different liquid. Mm -hmm. So the this room is very high, mm -hmm. so it's too hot. Okay. So we're heading into the control room for the brew house. This is the control room in the burn house. In this room, we can control the whole process in the burn house from the raw material incoming and uh, storage and the transfer and the uh, matching, uh, lottering and the boiling and the cooling. So this uh, whole uh, controls uh, for the what produce. I can show you the, this uh, scan. How, because of, in the Harbin world, we have the one, one control, the, the automatic system to control the whole, whole the process. The, this, uh, program can control the by no manual control this thing. So, so it's 100% automatic. Yeah. So, but then if we look at, uh, I'm going to ask my camera to, to, to zoom in for us on the first uh, screen. So it starts from like rice intake, like starch outtake, starch intake. So because we know beer are made from like starch uh, or malted uh, barley, rice, um, and wheat. So what can you tell us about these processes? So, okay. Mm. okay. Uh, if you want, we only mix the rice, malt, water, and the yeast together. What happened? No happened because we must uh, to trans convert the, the raw material to the extract. So how to do it is this project. So basically you put rice, starch, and malt into the... What did this machine do? I mean, these little okay. tubes. Uh, this uh, the silo. means the silo. Silo will store the, the raw material, such as the silo for the rice. Okay, this uh, silo for the uh, moat. 
the malt is the main raw material for the beer products. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have also some the rice and the raw material uh, handling system mm -hmm. in this uh, milling system. And uh, this is the rice cooker and much time to convert the raw material to the extract. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the first step. The second step is a larger time. It's a lot of time help us to uh, spect the extracts and the match. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we dispel this uh, moat, well, so the next step we only use the brain title to boil in the vault. Mm -hmm. This is a very important uh, step for the brain house because of uh, in this uh, equipment uh, we add in the hop. The hop is uh, help us the, 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 the vault get the the flavor gets the um, bitterness mm -hmm. and uh, gets uh, the, some the micro stabilization mm -hmm. for the whole the control the, the yeast uh, fermentation. Mm -hmm. So behind the glass actually is the entire system that we can see here on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for the, for the, uh, the barrels or the kettles that we see out, out there behind the glass. Yes. And uh, behind this glass is very hot because of the, the water boiling, the temperature is 100 degrees, so, mm -hmm. so on site is very cold, it's very hot. Yes. It's about like 44 degrees Celsius, right? The area is 44 the degrees for, the, for the each people who work on the site, and the inside the equipment, the temperature is about 100 degrees. So basically inside the cookers or the kettles, the, the, the degrees is like 100 uh, degrees Celsius. It's like a boiling point. And for the room, for the entire room, the temperature is about like 44 uh, degrees Celsius. So oh, we cannot enter into the, the chamber yet just because we need to wear like protective gears. Um, and we have to protect ourselves and we cannot really go inside without uh, just w in our normal clothing. And so we ha well, here we have a, a, a whole set of the protective gear that workers here will wear it when they enter the chambers or into uh, elsewhere inside the manufacturing facility. So what can you tell us about this, um, this protective gear? Okay. So we have the helmet and the goggle. I think these are pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So what about these sleeves? What can these do? Mm -hmm. Okay, this uh, slept. So uh, so uh, protective for the arm because of the equipment uh, side is very hot. This can uh, help to, to protect us for the arm don't have the, the high temperature uh, con, uh, con, uh, surface. So basically, it, it, because we know the kettle is like 100 degrees inside, so it's really hot. So when we touch, like this can protect us from like burning ourselves. Yes. Right? yes. What about like, scratching or sometimes because they are made like from metals and their stairs. Will they actually uh, protect us from other harms uh, inside the factory? In the, in the brewery, we have some the glass because of in the packaging department, we also must bring this uh, glass because uh, some of the broken the glass will maybe the broken our the lab. Mm -hmm. So this also help us to protect it after the lab don't have, have some of the, the broken with the glasses. So definitely, it's, it's a Basically, in the in the bottling facility, yeah. there will be broken glass, yeah. and this will also protect the workers from scratching them from like broken glasses. Um, here we have a pair of shoes. Oh, this is a shoes. So, what can you tell us about these shoes? What, are these special? Because it, it looks like like regular shoes. Yeah. So, what's so the secret this behind this? This shoe like, is very high because of uh, they have some uh, protective uh, equipment for in these shoes. To when we use this, uh, bring this shoes, you have the uh, protect the when the height uh, broke down on your shoes. They have protect your shoes. They don't have some uh, the broken and anything. And and so you. You told me like uh, earlier, so it's, it's like there is steel, right? Yes. So, so this shoe is basically steel toe, and it, it, you know it can be found, commonly found like on construction sites. But also, workers here will also wear similar type of shoes to make sure that they won't break their feet or hurt their feet if anything fall from a uh, from the height. So we're heading to our next stop. So things. So what, what, what will happen for things like being like the starch, rice, and weed cook it here? So where are, what's the next step for them? The next step is the fermentation. Uh, we use the pipeline transfer the water to go to the fermentation area for mm -hmm. the fermentation process. So we're going to head into the, 
the fermentation chamber. So we'll basically just go back to yeah. the, along the, the, the original way. So behind this door is the fermentation chamber. But as we have mentioned, if we want to enter this, we have to wear those protective gears. And, the, and so basically inside it, there will be huge barrels, huge kettles, similar to what we saw in, in the other chamber that we just saw, the burn house. Uh, so, so for the time sake, we're not going, to be, and then we have to go downstairs and upstairs and so that we can find that level. So for the time sake, we're not going inside of the fermentation chamber, but then, uh, Master Wang, what can you tell us about the fermentation process? So just explain us a, a little bit how important is the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, the fermentation process, when we produce the wort, so the yeast will mix the, the wort together in the fermenter. And we control the temperature and the time to control the yeast fermentation. So when the yeast produce some the alcohol and the, uh, some yeast and some the liquid and the, the flavor for the beer, mm -hmm. so in this tank for whole the process, the fermentation process. So uh, when we yeast uh, uh, complete the other uh, sugar can the uh, con conversion to the, the alcohol and the other the flavor, mm -hmm. so we we have the yeast mm -hmm. to store in the yeast brain tank. So basically, the fermentation chamber is where that the word meets with the yeast, with the sugar, with the, with the hops, right? Yes, similar, and we also control the, 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 the whole time because uh, they have some the special uh, uh, parameter for the fermentation and we get the special the flavor. Mm -hmm. In the level, we also control and test some of the process, the PC mm -hmm. parameters to control the how to get the maturation of the liquid. When, mm -hmm. when the liquid the maturation, we can use the filtration for the next step. And actually, just outside, these, these huge tank and huge yeah. barrels, they are actually the fermentation yes. tanks, right? Yes, yes. Each fermentation tank is uh, 4,800 hectoliters uh, mm -hmm. liquid in this uh, fermentation. So, but for like different brands, for different, uh, like different kinds of beer, mm -hmm. Would the fermentation process yes. be different? Yes. Uh, the fermentation area have the two the varieties of the beer, the larger and the ale. The most of the marketing it shows a less a larger beer. Mm -hmm. Larger beer is special for the clear, mm -hmm. and the have some the bitter and some the the hop moist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another is uh, the variety is uh, some such as the ale. Air beer, air beer is the, the strong, the yeasty, and the strong the flavor mm -hmm. to taste the very, it very heavy. And the center, the different uh, customer has the choice different the liquid. But then uh, during the fermentation process, there is also like filtering and mm -hmm. the screening. What, what does that do? Because the other day, I, I actually went down to the, the, the fermentation uh, chamber that I saw like, it was like darker liquid going through one pipe, but then mm -hmm. it's filtered and became, became clear. Mm -hmm. So what does yes. that do? Uh, okay, this is uh, very important because of the after the filter, uh, fermentation, some of the yeast are still in the ferment, fermentation liquid. Mm -hmm. So we use... And that's the, why it's darker, it's like y yellowish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so we use the filtration, uh, DE is... Uh, Disperse uh, some of the yeast and uh, some of the different uh, uh, disperse, uh, clear the liquid. Mm -hmm. So after the filtration, the liquid is very clear mm -hmm. and, uh, show, and show you, uh, almost show you the onside, the marketing, the liquid is mm -hmm. very similar. But then when we think about a beer, it has like a brownish color. So where did that color come from, like for okay. the actual color. beer? So the beer color from is from the moat. Mm. Because of different uh, percent of malt have a different color. Mm. And the second is in the boiling. In the wort boiling time, so the, when the time is longer, the color is very high. Mm. So the, the beer color control in the raw material and the brewhouse process.
So, um, because you mentioned about lager beer, so lager beer is more like traditional, it's, it's, a, it's a cool process to ferment say, the, the ingredients and is more commonly found here in China. A lot of the beer brands, they use this lager process, a lager process to make beer. But also craft beer in China is also growing its popularity. And here we are on site of a smaller scale of uh, like a brewing facility for craft beer here in Bar Harbin Brewery. And here with me is the person in charge of this facility, Mike. So you're not from here, right? No, I'm not. <laughs> so how long have you been in China? I've been in China for seven years. Uh, and he, basically, you 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 control or you you oversee the operation here in the in the craft beer department, right? Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're just cross brewing. Uh, so ABI purchased Boxing Cat, and we ended up mm -hmm. doing cross brewing up here in Harbin. Mm -hmm. I've been here for the past eight months, and we've been basically going through the process, making sure SOPs are in line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, transitioning the guys who are working here mm -hmm. to understand what we're doing with craft and, mm -hmm. um, you know, take the, the mindset and, you know, behavior behind it as well with craft and, you know, get them to enjoy different types and flavors and mm -hmm. want them to understand more on, you know, because China's changing, you know, yep. like the U.S., big beer, there's a lot of transition, craft is starting to take over. As more and more locals in China travel outside, mm -hmm. you know, they want to have similar flavors and tastes back in China. Mm -hmm. A lot of locals are now starting to homebrew and get into craft mm -hmm. beer. So it's, it's, it's incredible on what China has done and how fast it's moved. But what are the differences between like craft beer? I mean, just apart from like ingredients, uh, like what are the major inference during the brewing process for craft beer and just regular commercial beer? Well, <laughs> I think with craft beer, I mean, we use uh, high quality materials. <laughs> um, you know, we try different things. There's no boundaries. Um, we're able to put different fruits in beers. Like, uh, you know, there's, there's just no boundaries when it comes to craft. With big beer, I mean, you have, uh, you, you, you know, you, with like Budweiser and mm -hmm. like Qingdao, mm -hmm. those are you know, I, I don't want to say they're watered down. They're, they're good beers, but they're more for higher volumes. Mm -hmm. You know, craft beer has always been a, niche uh, yeah, it's always been a niche market. It's always, uh, you know, for me, I always think craft has a story behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, each of our beers have stories behind each one. Mm -hmm. And we're able to explain those and go in more depth on, you know, why we created this beer and the style and the flavor. Mm -hmm. I think that's the difference with, you know, big beer and craft, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Thank you so much, Mike. Hey, Thank no you problem. so much. So, here what we have, you know, we for, for Harbin Brewery, they have big beer, as we, as Mike had mentioned, is those commercial beers that we can find uh, uh, in supermarkets. And also now, a lot of Chinese beer are also extending their offerings. They are trying to produce craft beer so that they can move up into a higher-end market so that uh, they can capture more, uh, like, younger drinkers, uh, drinkers that are, uh, are trendier drinkers. Uh, that's the transition of today's Chinese beer uh, industry. And to learn a little bit more about the history behind this brewery, brewery house, just because Harbin Brewery is one of the oldest brand here in China. Um, and my colleague Feng Yile is at the museum for Harbin Beer. And she will tell us and show us a little bit more about the history behind, uh, behind Chinese beer brewing and of, of course Harbin Brewery. Thanks, Xinchen, for sharing with us the latest techniques of making beers. And now the wheel of history turns and brings us uh, back to uh, the early 20th century. And I'm here at uh, Harbin Beer Museum, and with me is Ms. Jiang Ying. And we're going to deliver you a history class of the uh, Harbin beer production. And as you can see, we're now on a platform of uh, uh, the renowned uh, China Eastern Railway. And we all know that this railway is of great significance for the city of Harbin. And can you tell us more about 
uh, this railway. As we can see, there are, uh, this is a model of the uh, train uh, at that time. There are steam engine and also there are some vivid statue of people uh, on the platform. Um, this is the, we can say this is the first chapter of uh, uh, the story of beer production in Harbin. So what does this mean to uh, the beer produ production and also the city? Oh, yeah, well, so with the construction of the Chinese Eastern Railway and industry, commerce and population started to gather in Harbin. And uh, since the completion of the railway, and Harbin had been basically developed into a modern city. And here inside the train, we can see some pictures of uh, Harbin. And uh, I was told that uh, Harbin used to be a fishing village. And is it after uh, the, uh, the, the, the construction of the railway that it turns into a modern uh, international uh, metro metropolis? Yes, right. And uh, the Eastern Railway affected the Harbin, and Harbin mm -hmm. had become an international commercial city. And we can see the, the Western style, the mm -hmm. buildings and the restaurants and the stores here. Yeah. And the words here uh, say Zhongyang Street, which is also yeah. known as the Central Street, uh, which is now a landmark in mm -hmm. downtown Harbin. So we can see all those exotic architectures. Uh, are they influenced by the, um, as you say, the, the, the Western culture uh, at that time? Because we know uh, uh, Harbin had a influx of uh, hundreds and thousands of immigrants at that time and also uh, some 19 con uh, foreign countries had established their consulates here in the city. Uh, is that true? Yeah, exactly. And we can see the stores here oh. and uh, uh, it's by the Russian merchant. Mm -hmm. And also uh, there is a, a Wasili, the beer bar. Which is also Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No it's also the, 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 the Russian merchant. Yeah, the, the posters yeah. and billboards are written yes, in Russian. Yes, and at, a, at that time, so this bar attracted the many beer fines mm -hmm. all over the world. And also it's a gathering place for the beer fines. A gathering place for not just foreigners, but also local people? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah. So uh, these bronze uh, statues, uh, what do they show? The, the li lifestyle of people at that time? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the statue for that time. Uh, on, and I noticed there is uh, one special statue uh, on that side. Uh, uh, what, what, what is that? Yeah, the carriage is for the transportation for the fresh beer. For the fresh beer. Yeah. So at that time, uh, beer are transported with uh, carriage, uh, yeah. mostly. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that giant uh, equipment, what is that for? I assume uh, uh, that is part of the, the process of beer production. Yeah, while uh, it's made of the copper and it's the, the mesh uh, vessel. And uh, you know the mesh is the significant precise of the brewing. Mm. And also it affects the, uh, the quality and the type and the flavor of the beer. Okay. And also it's specially designed for the Harbin Brewery. Oh, so can we take a closer look inside the, the vessel? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, please. That's very impressive. But is it still used nowadays for production? Uh, it's the old style and for the, the day time in the early uh, 20th century. And now we have the, the modern, the modern vessel for brewing and mashing. And I heard that uh, um, Harbin Brewery, which is also uh, the oldest uh, beer brand in China, was established by a Russian gentleman. And I saw something yeah. over there. Is that sh does that show? Uh, part of that story? Yeah, and uh, Harbin beer originated in the 19th, 1900s and also it's by the, the uh, Russian merchant and Ulu Bulevsky and we can see that the statue, I the figure is for the founder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so can we say um, Harbin beer though it's a domestic brand but at the very beginning it's of uh, uh, strong Russian flavor? Uh, yeah, we can see that and also uh, at that time, and uh, uh, you know, so it attracted the mind the, the the Westerners and the foreigners to gather Harbin. And from some point, we can say uh, the brewery facilitated the development of the city. Okay, so this um, Westernized flavor must come from a, a Westernized uh, produce, producing techniques. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you tell us some about that? Uh, yeah, from this. Uh, this statue is for the brewing scene, uh, the old style, and uh, we can see the workers and on their own the duties, and they um, 
they make they carried out the different precise of mm -hmm. brewing, uh, including the ferment and boiling and mashing, uh, filtering and the malting mm -hmm. and so on. But which comes which comes first? So first they add the raw materials. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, and the raw material material includes, uh, I guess, grains like rice, uh, barley, wheat? yeah, barley, mm -hmm. yes, and, what else? and hops. Oh. Uh, yeah. And here we can see uh, some more visualized uh, facilities for the uh, for the process you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the traditional, mm -hmm. the brewing, the facilities, and uh, also that's the barley. Yeah. Okay. And here we can see a, a timeline. Is it for the uh, brand that we've been talking about? Yeah, uh, this area um, displays the development history and owners by the Harbin beer. And we can see it's founded in the 1900 mm -hmm. uh, by the, the Russian merchant. Mm -hmm. And in 1950, uh, it's renamed as the Harbin Brewery. Mm -hmm. And in, um, in 2008, and uh, joined the uh, uh, Hazel Bush. And now uh, in 2014, mm -hmm. and we can see a new modern factory and beer museum established here. Uh, so the museum itself, uh, what is that for? Yeah. I mean, the museum we're, we're, in, we're in now. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about uh, the museum, why they uh, built it, ah. and uh, what we can see inside the museum? Yeah, as we know, because the Harbin beer is the earliest brand in China, and uh, now we have the history, so we can build the museum and to show the, the history mm -hmm. and the technique of the Harbin beer. And we've already uh, seen uh, part of the history uh, you, 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 you showed us. And uh, yeah. what else? Uh, yeah, uh, in the Beer Museum, we have the three stories. And the first story is about the uh, history. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, on the second floor, it's about the branding. Oh, so yeah. is that where we, we are heading to? Yes, exactly. And uh, as we know, uh, the Harbin Beer uh, is the uh, partner, the sponsor partner for the uh, World, World Cup. And it's the only beer brand for sponsoring the two consecutive the World Cup events. Oh. And now and Russia is, is currently holding the, this year's World Cup. Um, what, what do you think uh, Har uh, Harbin Beer uh, has uh, contributed to this uh, kind of uh, sports uh, spirit? Uh, uh, is there any special campaign and uh, activities related to that? Yeah. Uh, now the Harbin beer is very popular among the young people mm. and also it's related to the sports and the music. And yeah. uh, here we, I, I noticed there is a, a tornado-like uh, statue which is, looks very powerful and it's made of uh, multiple cans of uh, Harbin beer. Mm -hmm. What does that symbolize? Yeah, it's a can uh, of the good prospect mm -hmm. for the market and we hope the Harbin beer can be the popular and the nationwide. And I think we are now on the second story. So uh, I also uh, saw some uh, uh, awards and uh, medals uh, displayed uh, on, the, on the ground floor. And uh, what, what are those for? Uh, yeah, that's the owner uh, for the Harbin beer. Maybe like we, we uh, got some of the certificates and mm -hmm. the trophies from the government and uh, from the agency. Yeah. So. After showing uh, the uh, achievements of this uh, domestic beer brand, uh, can you tell us what makes it so different? What's the unique features of Harbin? Yeah, because beer? we have the, the history, we have the branding, and also we, we are the, the, the famous brand in China. Yeah. And here we come to a cinema. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the motion cinema, and uh, um, the name of the film is The Brewing Legend of mm -hmm. Harbin Beer, and it t tells the precise mm -hmm. uh, 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 from the green, greens to the beer. And I assume uh, this interactive device is uh, set here for visitors to learn more about the, uh, the brand and also uh, maybe beer production? Is that uh, yes, it's for the, the tourists. Mm -hmm. 
and to understand, to know about the precise of the brewery. Mm -hmm. And what is that gallery? Oh, the gallery is about the NBA and uh, uh, the World Cup. Uh, the, the, yeah. the one you mentioned? Yes, yes. What is that for? Uh, is there anything interesting about uh, uh, the gallery and uh, uh, furthermore uh, venues? Yeah, um, it's the interactive uh, mm -hmm. the area and also the tourists can mm -hmm. have some uh, to some sports. Mm -hmm. Oh, just I, yeah. think, uh, I think the cinema is open right now. Can we just take yeah, a look yeah, at please. it out at the, at the gateway? Yes. And also the, the chair can be moved. Yeah, it looks along very with advanced. This. Yes, yes. And, and also you can mm -hmm. smile some the, the, uh, the from the hops mm -hmm. and uh, during the cinema. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess you've, you must have helped uh, lots of visitors like me. Uh, what do they think about the, uh, oh. yeah, what, they, what they see on the second floor? And uh, um, do, do they tell you uh, any, uh, anything about the beer and the knowledge they, they yeah. learn? Uh, yes, because our the visitors and the tourists mm. are from uh, all over mm. the country, and also they like this film, mm -hmm. and they they were very impressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about young people? I guess uh, those uh, like yeah high tech uh, equipments yeah. yeah attract lots of teenagers. Yeah. What do they think about that? Yeah, the young people uh, they would like to. Yeah, uh, they would like to visit uh, the second floor mm -hmm. because we have the sports, we have the motion mm -hmm. movie, and also they like them a lot. Maybe even video games? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wonder what people think, uh, think about uh, a beer production company uh, do all those things to attract young people because uh, we know there are uh, some con controversial issues like uh, addiction to alcohol and also mm -hmm. uh, drunk driving and uh, people may think uh, the branding of a, 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 a company like this will do harm to our, uh, our next generation so uh, does the company itself uh, do anything to, to, to respond to those uh, blame and doubt? Uh, yes so from this point, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, maybe uh, we have the, the company culture mm -hmm. and um, our dream is the best beer company bring people together for a better world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it consists of the uh, three pillars, three parts. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is the responsible drinking, mm -hmm. just as you said. And uh, we care for the end age drinking prevention mm -hmm. and also uh, we care for uh, the drink not drive. And uh, on the uh, responsible day, uh, in September and our volunteers from the plants and uh, we go to the uh, street and restaurant and uh, to propagate the uh, drink not drive and also uh, another part is the environment protection and also we care for the reclaim water reuse and uh, mm, we also sponsored mm -hmm. uh, the six hope schools in mm -hmm. Harbin and we care for the community and uh, what are the outcomes of those campaigns and events? Uh, yes, yes. And uh, we carried out many campaigns and on the different day, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the safety day mm -hmm. and the World Environmental Day and uh, the Responsible Drinking Day and the Children's Day. Mm -hmm. Like um, in, uh, on the Children's Day, we, the volunteers, and we go to the Hope School and bring some gifts to the students. And also, uh, we uh, care for their psychology, the, uh, the development. Yeah. And uh, are you uh, also a, har a, a, a citizen living in Harbin? Uh, yeah, I'm the citizen in Harbin. So for you, uh, after you talking about uh, introducing to us uh, lots of information about the, uh, the beer itself, the history and also the, the culture of the company, what do you think uh, this, this brand um, mean to you or mean to your people? Is it part of a life or just a uh, normal beer that uh, uh, are kind of tasty? Uh, yeah, because I was born in Harbin mm -hmm. and Harbin beer maybe uh, also 
uh, along, along my grow up, mm -hmm. and uh, I know it uh, maybe from I'm a, a child, mm -hmm. and also the Harbin people maybe have the uh, the good uh, the emotion, the strong mm -hmm. emotion with the Harbin beer, and the Harbin beer is also like a, another name card of this city, mm -hmm. and um, we related it together. And yeah. here we're in a uh, igloo-like uh, bar, uh, which is. Uh, is there a, a place for y for you to actually uh, uh, experience some real harbing beer? Uh, yeah, this ice bar displays some the different types of the harbing mm -hmm. beer. Yeah, and the visitors can enjoy maybe enjoy uh, some beers here sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also we can go to the third floor and we have a big bar. Oh, so what can we expect there? Uh, yeah, uh, let's go there to see. Okay. So thank you, Ms. Zhang. This is very uh, informative and impressive because um, after this uh, educational journey, we know uh, that Harbin and especially Harbin beer is not just uh, something we know nowadays, which is uh, uh, advanced, which is modern, but also has a, uh, has a, has a splendid history and a flourish culture. Um, so I assume um, these, uh, the culture, the history, are embodied in the beer itself. So, what can we uh, expect from the the, the taste uh, the, the tasting uh, uh, session of of, of, of the Harbin beer? Uh, yes. And first, I'm glad to. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, this is the the beer bar, and uh, the visitors can enjoy the beer, the fresh beer here. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh yeah, let's go to the counter. Oh. And I will show you some of the different types of the beer. So how many different kinds of uh, beers oh. do we have here at yeah, the... So, so, so many cans. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take a closer. Oh, guess who we find? Oh, it's the trip. It's through the, the museum. Yeah, it's... So um, hi, I'm back. <laughs> so, so what do you learn uh, around the museum? So? Well, we start from the history of the city, mm -hmm. and then we... Uh, we see the the the, the 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 company how the from from how the the russian people mm -hmm. built it to uh it's 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 a growth mm -hmm. yeah so and, we, and then we end up and here we, and uh, what we're yeah. going to do here what we're going to do to here. try yeah. some beer so what, what do we have what can you, help, can you offer yeah, and then, uh, we display some the different uh, type of the harbin beer like this the white beer and uh, uh the Bing Chun, the Icy Pure, and uh, the Wheat King, Xiao Mai Wang. And uh, this is our high end brand, the 1900. 1900 is, uh, marks the day when the, the, the factory was, was established, right? Yes, exactly. The or origination, the year. So, which and one is your favorite? Oh, <laughs> my favorite. Yes. I, I, I like all. <laughs> I cannot see which one I like the best. Because I just went to the, 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 the brew, brewing facility mm -hmm. and I went to the burn house and, uh, and also the craft beer facility. And I learned that there are a lot of different ways. I mean, these, I mean, these all are, are, uh, are beer, but then they taste different, like West beer, uh, regular beer in 1900. So what are the difference between the tastes? Like, just even in today's Chinese supermarkets, we can find so many different kinds of beer and talking about speaking of Chinese beer, so are there any difference, just to your knowledge? Wow, maybe it's a professional question can be explained by our the brewmaster. Yes, maybe according to the raw materials different and mm -hmm. the techniques, maybe some beer taste better, mm -hmm. yeah, but maybe uh, some, ta uh, some taste uh, the long finish and the smooth, yeah, it, it depends, the mm -hmm. techniques, yeah. So which and one are we going to? Yeah, maybe we, we, we can taste some of the fresh beer. Yeah. I guess we're going to ca have a toast and uh, we're going to wrap up for today, I guess. Yeah, thank you, Miss John, for uh, showing yeah. us around. So. so we're going to have a sip of yeah, have a sip Harbin of beer. <laughs> and Harbin and uh, beer culture. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Wait.